upper circular ligament. So from here, we're going to begin the same way. We're going to locate the C2 spinous process using our thumb and forefinger grip to take a pinch contact at either side of the SP. So we'll find C2 spinous, take our pinch contact, again firmly making sure that we have good contact here. To begin, we'll have the neck in a neutral position and we're going to passively rotate the skull in C1 over C2. We're going to go as far as we can into end range in both directions. And here it's even more critical to stabilize C2 effectively because we're looking at degrees of rotation. And if we see that there are 30 or more degrees of rotation, regardless of our patient's symptoms and the presence of an end feel, more than 30 degrees tends to indicate pathological disruption of the ALR ligament. So we want to be on the lookout for that. If we haven't stabilized C2 effectively, then we're going to see more motion than 30 degrees and we're going to get scared with no need. So instead, hold C2 as firmly as possible, and that should limit the amount of upper cervical rotation that happens. So this is checking rotation, part one. Part two is going to assess for lateral flexion in three positions. So the first position is neutral. We have our pinch contact on C2 just as before, and now we're going to laterally flex, first to one side, then to the other side. Again, keeping a nice firm hold on C2. Then we can flex, and again, laterally flex to one side, laterally flex to the opposite side. And then finally, extension, laterally flex to one side, laterally flex to the opposite side. So in rotation, we have a numerical degree measurement that we're going for. We'd like to be under 30 degrees. For lateral flexion, that's not the case. In lateral flexion, we're assessing for the end field, the quality of that ligamentous barrier. We'd like that to be springing but firm. So if there's not a firm end range barrier, then that's your indication that there is instability and lateral flexion present in one or more of those positions. So again, looking for what is the quality of that motion? Does it feel like there's nothing stopping that motion at the end of it? That's an indicator of pathological instability, disruption of the ALAR ligament. So those two parts make up the ALAR ligament stress test. Any question about those? And, that, and those characteristics have to be present in all three positions. Ideally, yes, if we'd like to be confident about this. However, if you detect instability in just one position with a truly empty end feel, then that patient should be further evaluated. So that's going to perhaps not be an emergency stabilization and transport situation, but we definitely want to pay attention to that finding, even if it occurs only in one position. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So let's run through this test. Again, just practicing in our...